I'm so excited. We've had so many great speakers, and now we're going to keep it rolling. I want to introduce to you a very powerful speaker. Please join me in welcoming Lisa Aneva. Hi, my name is Lisa Neva. I am an entrepreneur, founder of Dancing Is My Voice, and a volunteer for the RAIN Speakers Bureau. Oh, I have to catch my breath. That was some good dancing. <laughs> I mentioned those three things about myself. I could mention many more, but there are many things about my life that I love that I would not be able to claim if I had listened to what other people said was possible about my life. Many people have tried to throw yellow flags at me, and that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. Yellow flags and yellow cards. Before I begin, let me just get an idea of who's out there. Do we have any American football fans in the house tonight? Let's hear you. All right. Nice. What about soccer fans? Woo! Boy, people get fired up about sports, right? Do I have any fans of snowball fights? Yeah. Huh? Okay, all of you who just raised your hands right now, you'll have to come back for my next presentation because there's something about yellow and snow that just don't mix. So I'm not gonna talk about that tonight. You know, when I first started watching American football, it was really confusing to me and it seemed really unpredictable. There were things about the game that were really easy to understand. The quarterback got the ball, he passed it down to the receiver who ran with it. What was confusing to me was that the referees kept throwing these yellow flags onto the field. And since I didn't understand the rules, I had no idea why this was happening. I can't help but think about the parallels between my own life and how I felt watching those football games. I was abused as a child, and life was really unpredictable. I didn't understand the rules. And I tried to prevent the abuse by having perfect behavior. Tried not to make people angry, but it didn't work. So watching the football games was a lot like how I felt when I was growing up. You know, don't we wish we all had our own personal box of yellow flags? You just insulted me, yellow flag. I don't like what you just said, yellow flag. You know, as I watched a few more American football games, I noticed that every once in a while there was a player who just totally ignored the yellow flags. He held onto that ball tight, just kept running, and this really impressed me because he didn't let the yellow flags stop him from going for what he wanted, which was to cross into that end zone. Soccer is similar to football in many ways. They don't have flags, but they have yellow cards. Did anybody watch the, the World Cup on the subject of soccer? Anybody talk, watch the World Cup? It was awesome, wasn't it? There was one game that I remember watching in particular with a bunch of friends, but there was one friend from a South American country, and her team was playing that day. When she arrived for the game, you would have thought she was the world's biggest fan. She was wearing her team's soccer jersey. Her face was painted in the team colors. She was even drinking the punch in her team colors. One thing I didn't know about this particular friend before the game started, was that she thought it was bad luck to cheer for a player before he made a goal. So you can imagine a room full of us, 20 people in a room, getting really excited when a player got close to making a goal, when a player was about to shoot. We were yelling, screaming, getting all, all happy. And of course, you know, most times when the player shoots, he doesn't make the goal. So when that happened, she would look at us, she'd be like, I told you so, 
the reason he didn't make that goal is because you cheered too soon. Having that experience with my friend brought up this question for me. How many people in my life are willing to celebrate only my successes? I wish they would cheer me on along the way, but that doesn't always happen. But still, they may be able to celebrate with me. If you notice in a soccer game, well, in most soccer games, there's no green card. There are some, some Italian leagues, I think they have a green card, but mostly you don't have a green card. The referee isn't there waving his green card saying, go for it, yes, you're doing great. Okay, the referee doesn't have to do that because that's what the fans do. The fans are cheering the player on. Really, what the referee is there to do is to watch for anything that's wrong and stop the game. The referees are game stoppers, not fans. Do you see the difference? You know, if I'm honest with myself, I have to admit that sometimes I throw out my own yellow flags. People have said some not very nice things to me, even cruel things. And for so long I believed them, and I still have to fight that tendency to repeat those hurtful words to myself. People have said things to me like, you're just a bad kid, that's why bad things happen to you. You'll never do anything right. It's all your fault. I realized that to get over those hurtful words, I need to listen more to my fans than to my showstoppers or my game stoppers. I need to surround myself with people who believe in me. One of the things that um, is, works for me personally is that on a personal level, my biggest fan is God. He's pretty awesome. I think he's pretty awesome. And he says a lot of really great things about me, which is why daily I have to listen to what he says. I talk with him all the time. I want to leave you with just three questions. Who are your fans? The people that you may need to listen more to. Who are the people who are your game stoppers? The ones who just want to wait for something to go wrong and point it out to you. And finally, are there any areas in your life where you just need to keep running toward the end zone even though everybody else on your field has stopped the game. Thank you so much for listening to me tonight. I wish you success in all that you do.
it. Awesome. You guys having a good time? Yes. That was awesome. You know, I think about how, you know, one of the major things I'm hearing is about how you know, everything happens for a reason. And I think about how there's a true story, true story. There was a lady running late for work one morning, all because of her daughter taking too long to get ready for school. And I can imagine she was feeling very angry and frustrated at her daughter for making her late for work. I imagine she was feeling very disappointed that she was going to have to arrive at work late this morning, all because of her daughter taking too long to get ready for school. But when she arrived at work that morning, she realized that on this particular morning, it was a very good thing that she arrived late to work. Because this morning was Tuesday morning, September the 11th, 2001, and this lady worked in the World Trade Center. If it had not been for her daughter who made her late for work, she would have been in the building when the planes hit. It's amazing how really our problems are really blessings in disguise. Holler if you hear me, right? Our problems can bless our lives. Our problems can bless our lives in ways that we don't even understand. And I think about this in my personal life. You know, I remember when I was in high school, for a while during my high school years, I became very heartbroken because there was this girl who I liked who did not like me back. And it really broke my heart because I felt as though she was my soulmate. I felt like we were made for each other. In fact, every time I'd see her in the hallways, I'd feel a little hypnotized. You know that feeling you get when you see someone that you have a crush on? It's like that high feeling. You know what I'm talking about, that high feeling? That's what I felt. Every time I'd see her in the hallways, I felt that high feeling. And that high feeling was so intense, the physical attraction was so strong, that I thought it was a sign that this was true love. I thought that we were soulmates. And so when she rejected me, I felt as though my heart split in half and I became very depressed. But an interesting thing happened. As time went by and as I grew older and more mature, I began to look back over that experience and I began to see something that I never saw previously. You see, it wasn't until later on in my life, as I was looking back over my teenage years, that I began to realize that when I was a teenager, I was very immature. And if I would have gotten into a relationship with that girl at that time, because of my immaturity, I would have ended up making some bad decisions. I would have ended up giving in to certain temptations. I would have ended up making some bad choices that would have caused a lot of pain in my life. It's interesting how at the time I was so very heartbroken and disappointed because of her rejection. But now, as I look back over that experience, I realize that her rejection was really a blessing in disguise. Because you see, she was involved, this particular girl, she was involved with some very unhealthy things like drugs and alcohol. And I was aware of it but I overlooked it because I was so very physically attracted to her. I was so very physically attracted to her that I overlooked the fact that she had these unhealthy habits in her life. It's amazing how, it's amazing how physical attraction clouds judgment. Holler if you hear me. Have you noticed that? Physical attraction clouds judgment. Have you noticed that when you get, when, when, when you become very physically attracted to, to someone, often your mindset gets a little cloudy. So we have to be very careful. Be careful what you wish for. Because often in life, the things that look good to us are not good for us. Holler if you hear me, right? Very often in our lives, the things that look good to us are not good for us. Things are not always what they seem to be. In fact, very often, even poison is wrapped in beautiful wrapping paper. So please always remember this. Always remember this. Do not follow your heart. Lead your heart. Do not follow your heart, lead your heart. And what I mean by that is do not blindly follow your heart. Of course, you want to follow your goals and your dreams and your passion, but do not blindly follow your heart because there are times in life in which even your own heart will try to lead you down the wrong path. There are times in life in which even your own heart will try to deceive you. In other words, what I'm saying is this. Do not live your life based on your emotions. Live your life based on your principles, wise principles. Because your emotions are not steady. Have you noticed that? Your emotions are not reliable. Have you noticed that in many situations, your emotions can get you into a lot of trouble? So do not live your life based on your emotions. Live your life based on your principles, wise principles. You know, over the years, I've come to realize that just because you become very physically attracted to someone doesn't necessarily mean that they're a good fit for you. Also, I've come to realize that 
a relationship that is based solely on physical attraction and, ro and romantic desire will last only as long as the feelings last. There has to be a deeper connection. We have to look beyond the shell. And often it's hard to look beyond the shell because we're so visual, all right? But we have to look beyond the shell and see the inner heart. You know, I think about, I think about um, an experience I had when I was in college for a semester or two, I worked part-time at the Disability Support Center on, on campus. And my job was to assist students who had physical disabilities. And one of the students I assisted was a girl who was blind. She was blind, and also she had like some mental issues. And I remember as I was getting to know her, I remember how I started to realize that she faced a lot of rejection in her life, a lot of social rejection because of her physical challenges. And I remember it was November and Thanksgiving was coming up, and I realized that she didn't have a place to go for Thanksgiving. And so I invited her to have Thanksgiving with my family because on my mom's side of the family, we always have a big Thanksgiving dinner every, every year. And so she came and she felt loved by my family and she had a good time. And at the end of the night, she said something to me that I'll never forget. She said to me, Lance, you are so beautiful. And those words really touched me because I had struggled so long with insecurities regarding my physical appearance and my, my, you know, social skills and social anxiety and stuff. And so I had all these insecurities. And so for this girl, now keep in mind, she was blind. For this blind girl to call me beautiful, it showed me something very profound. It showed me that true beauty has nothing to do with our physical appearance. True beauty has everything to do with our kindness and our love and our compassion. Beauty is what beauty does. Holler if you hear me. Yes. Beauty is what beauty does. I know, I know, it sounds so cliche. <laughs> it's very cliche, but really, it really touched me so much. Because although it's cliche, and although we can understand it intellectually, often it's hard for us to really apply that to our, our real life, right? Emotionally, it's really hard sometimes to really understand that true beauty is on the inside. But you know, that experience, it really, it really showed me that it's amazing, it made me feel so good, you know? And, and it showed me that whatever we give to others always comes back to us multiplied. Because, you know, in this situation, I was just trying to reach out and share encouragement and love. And it's amazing how encouragement and love came back to me multiplied. And it showed me something so deep. It showed me that whenever I'm feeling down, whenever I'm feeling down, the secret to rising is trying to figure out a way to uplift others. Because I've noticed that whenever we try to uplift others, our mood automatically rises. In other words, we rise by lifting others. Holler if you hear me. Yes, we rise by lifting others. And I love that, I love that. It's amazing, amazing.